rise and shine value from family this is part two of the previous video we have more updates for you and my co-director will be joining us shortly so that we can share more with you we love you all do not forget to subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend Hi guys, we are right here. This is the exercising yard of the goat house. As you can see, you might be wondering why the goats are not here right now at this point. So because it's really rainy season and most times the exercising yard gets really damp. So we make sure we at least clean the exercising yard because later on the other goats are going to be here. So the goats are still in, inside right there in the house. They've already given them some shrubs, some grasses in there, but any time from now, we are going to let them outside. So there are different things that we actually do depending on the seasons, depending on whatever is actually happening. Like we tell you, we learn, we also implement whatever we've learned. So realize the goats could come sometimes here and the, the ground is a bit damp, which is not really very healthy for the goats. So we make sure now early in the morning, we just do the cleaning of the compound then of course the goats are kept in the house then when some people some of the guys take them to the field some will remain to clean the goat house in here because remember the goats are already in there and the cleaning has not been done for the goat houses so when they go to the field some people remain to clean the house disinfect it and also spray it that's what really happens that's why you see the compound is empty at this point right here then of course we have some other our team members some of the team members getting the shrubs getting the grasses like the brocaria the elephant grass then also other shrub to be ready for these other goats that remain behind but also for the south african goats by the way we also release them outside but in close monitoring so we monitor them closely so that they don't really go very far from the farm so we have someone right here who is bringing by the way the elephant grass so at least we have the elephant grass then we also have some banana leaves as well because these goats really love it so he's bringing them he's bringing more of them as well and also making sure that the water points are filled with water so we are going to fill the water the grass to be put in their in their feeding troughs like this one right here we have some in the background there then we have this ones here so this is what we are going to prepare before when the other goats that go grazing in the field go then the ones that remain will definitely have their feeds put right here so some of you are also as asking us why we decided to have such feeding troughs for them why we put them a little higher because of grazing to make them really comfortable when they are feeding because remember these are browsers so they have to 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 stand comfortably and of course most of them step right here and they feed from these feeding troughs as you can see right here so that's the reason as to why we make sure these feeding troughs are made this way. They are really very good. If you're a farmer out there, it also helps you to avoid wastage of food. Then you're putting it somewhere. When it falls down, most cases, the goats cannot eat it. But when it's at least here, it is secure and the goats can easily eat. Of course, some will fall down, but most of it will be eaten by the goats. Yeah, so that is what is happening right now. Then the ones who have been asking us about these stones right here. You know goats really love hilly or elevated spaces or grounds. That's why we put these stones right here. So they always come, play around, they always climb right here and also helps them with their hooves. It helps them, you know, shape their hooves clearly. So that's why it is like this. So these stones right here are of purpose for our goats as well they love elevation that's why you just you know put something there for them yeah that is it basically guys i didn't want to take you guys inside the house right here because when i enter most of them are going to think i'm letting them outside and they will start screaming because their time is almost for them to go out so let's go and see the other side let's go guys so that i can show you what is happening the other side of the farm let's go We 
we have this geese here which are really so protective hey so we have some some gooselings two of them protected by four <laughs> goose two males two females that's how they are very protective with these gooselings by the way and they move in pairs an interesting thing about goose is they always move in pairs so you realize we actually had three gooselings but one you know died because it was just left by itself and when we tried asking around they were like goose like moving in pairs if they're not in a pair then the other one is going to suffer and you know they can't survive for that long actually we also have one one goose that is by itself we bought it we never bought it as a pair so we bought it by itself but the beauty about it it just keeps keeps the other chickens whenever the other chicks are being born at the farm the poultry the, the local chickens that we have here it's the one that is always protecting moving with the, the with the hens in the field that this one's right here uh, with their gooselings protecting them making sure they're okay all the geese at the farm move in pairs apart from one that moves with the chickens and it has raised so many so many chicks at the farm for example the ones that are under that house right there i know you guys i think they're really quite far but they're under the, the other house right there it is the one that has really raised them so much so it works by itself doesn't mix with the rest of the with the goose with the geese here so it's by itself i just wanted to give you guys just that highlight for those who have been asking us oh can i get some geese from you guys what should i do when you're going to buy buy a pair because these geese move in pairs so i'm really super excited for these gooselings they are coming along together very well they're growing and i'm really so happy so let's keep moving i'm getting tired hey hmm. well, let's go Well guys, we have our Michael director right here. You're uh, most welcome. Thank you so much, partner. Guys, yeah, today I was doing the rounds and I was doing something that was actually very important. You know, when you actually run a company, sometimes you don't just tend to your flock, you also have to tend to your people. Yeah. And so the level, the morale wasn't quite what, you know, <laughs> the level that we usually like it to be. So. Apart from me running the rounds, checking, you know, checking on the animals, checking on the herd, I spent a good part of my visit today to the farm, talking to the staff, taking the temperature, make sure everybody's okay, because <laughs> I myself, you know, uh, there are added responsibility that I've actually taken on, you know, for the next couple of weeks. I'm not going to be here. Tina's going to be holding down the fort. But I also wanted to make sure that everybody knew that everything was going to run the same. Mm. As it's usually been the case, whether I'm in the U.S. or if I'm not in the country, Tina always holds on the fort. But then, you know, it, it sometimes it's just as important to sit down, talk to your staff, yeah. and understand what's really happening, and see if you can actually curve a potential problem by simply being attentive and listening and showing that you care. You know, those are the things that you do that don't show up on the stat sheet that can make the difference between you being in business and you being out of business, right? Yeah. And that's an important lesson to learn. But another thing too, I'm so glad Tina actually showed you guys, you know, the amount of kids that we have that actually have moms that did not bond with them. That can happen for a few reasons, right? The main thing I want to make sure I point out to you guys, in that house there, number one, the place is definitely overcrowded. We, that's the reason why we've actually built another structure. And I read the comments. Some of you guys think, <laughs> oh, we're just spending money all willing in it. No, mm. we have a company that is growing. And for all of you guys that are in the business, that's a problem you should hope and pray you end up having in the future. Because if you have to build additional structure, that can only mean one thing. <laughs> Your company is expanding. Your farm is growing. So ultimately, that structure there don't have the actual nanny quarters and what is that those are the actual chambers that typically when you have a goat that's ready to give birth we typically keep them in that chamber they go on zero grazing 
They are fed there. They're kept there with their kids when they actually deliver for at least the first week or so. So to make sure that they properly bond, they probably get attached. And then from there, the mother will continue to take care of their kids. But if you don't have that, you run a much higher probability of that nanny rejecting mm. their kids. Now, it can happen even in those quarters, but the numbers gra greatly diminish if you actually have them in that quarter, in that tight space for at least those first seven plus days. Because sometimes the mother might initially reject the kids, but after like two to three days in that quarter, right, then that whole bond can actually still be rekindled and that, uh, that foster relationship you know, it's been averted because the mother would then start taking care of their own kids. So that's something that, you know, we promise you guys, we will bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and these are some of the challenges, challenges that we do face as a team. Mm -hmm. And we don't gloss over everything. We keep it real. We let you guys know what's happening. And that's, that's the beauty of our team here. Yeah. Because when it's good, we share. Mm -hmm. When it's challenging, we also share. So that way you can benefit from our experience and sometimes even our pain. Mm, exactly. And of course, there are people who are also suffering in the same way, but they are they will never very tell scared you. to They'll talk. Never tell you. Exactly. They'll never talk about it, but they make it look like everything is really rosy. Then a new farmer comes in, starts, and everything becomes a disaster. So at least it's better for us to always be open with you tell you guys everything that we are actually doing here so that you're ready you're equipped you're prepared when you're getting into this you know what you're going to expect when you come into farming but i really appreciate you guys so much i really appreciate you grafton as well that you know you took your part to also talk to the staff talk to them so that they are comfortable that is something that most farmers do not really think about we've interacted with a few farmers who say like if the workers are there they don't care as long as i'm paying them man the money that is it but it's always good to at least get the relationship with the people that you're working with because without these people at the farm you're not going to benefit these other people can fail you as well exactly and the thing is you have to treat this exactly the same right mm -hmm. imagine if you have a pediatrician taking care of your children you know at the very least you should want to have a relationship with that pediatrician because they take care of the most important part of your life right True. your offspring your legacy it's the same thing if you make such a heavy investment into your farm the people that are in charge you know those are your pediatricians in real life right i mean i know True. it's just a metaphor but I, I want you guys to understand those are the people that are going to be looking after the, the heaviest investment you've made since building or purchasing your first home because at the end of the day, if these people are unhappy, the level of care for your animals it's are not going to be there. Mm. If they feel unappreciated, the level of <laughs> compassion and care for your animals won't be there. And I want to make sure that I, the reason this is so, so, so important. Mm. Sometimes in life, guys, as in anything, you have people that are good. You have people that have malice in their heart. But I will tell you this. There are so many of you out there that are just getting started into this business that still have a nine to five or you still work in a corporate job in Kampala or wherever you are. I don't care if you're in Kinshasa, wherever, okay? And you are relying on your staff to look after your flock for you. Many of you guys out there are losing your kids and your mortality rate it's is high. more than 50%, 60%. And you guys are suffering in silence. In reality, a lot of the time, your kids are not dying from any ailment. They're dying from people that are working for you, that are unhappy True. in their position, that are unhappy with either the way you're paying them or that are simply not a good fit. Like they came to you because they were desperate for money, but in reality, they don't really care for the job or they don't know the job. They're not interested in doing the job. And a lot of the time, your kids are actually dying from starvation. Where you have your staff, you know the kids are supposed to be separate from their moms, from the nannies and then they'll keep the kids separate. They'll still take the nannies out to feed. Then the kids are sitting there in the structure all day and they're starving. starving to death. You understand? So these are some of the things that, you know, we have learned based work. on experience. So that sometimes you don't think about these things, but these are the elements that are laying underneath the surface that you as a new farmer, you will never know. You're just gonna take heavy losses and then if you're not built for it, you may find yourself out of business, right? Simply because you did not understand how to navigate that situation. 
We don't want to end on a negative note, but I have to keep it real with you guys. Amazing. Hope you guys have learned one or two things from here, but do not forget to leave your comments down below so that we hear from other farmers out there how they are solving such issues that we are also having at the farm so that we can also learn from you. But we really appreciate you guys. If you've watched up to this point, give us a like as well and subscribe if you haven't already. But do not forget to go check out our social media platforms. We have Instagram, which is Value Farm UG. Facebook is also Value Farm. TikTok, Value Farm. Go see behind the scenes and the little clips that we don't share here. But really appreciate you guys. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Till next time. Bye. Bye.